to throw all the garbage of the city, all the garbage of the factories, all the garbage of the household, throw into the water. And you are asking for clean water. That's not sustainable. You have to change your lifestyle. I hope that we're building the foundation for the agri-tech industry to transform food industry in the whole world. Hello, welcome to Cutter 365 with me, Adil Halim. On this episode, we continue to explore sustainability initiatives happening across the country and understand how new solutions in place help conserve the Earth's most valuable resource, water. I also sit down with Nobel laureate, Professor Mohammed Yunus, to find out how he thinks we could do a better job of protecting the planet. But first, Yuana Hu's visited two companies in Doha that have turned to the sky to power their pioneering food and water systems on the ground. Water is the essence of life, but in the GCC, with its harsh climate and limited freshwater sources, technology is crucial for producing sufficient and sustainable drinking water. Eco-friendly technology company Skydrops offers an innovative solution, a water generation plant that captures moisture from the sky to produce drinking water that, quite literally, has come out of thin air. In, in the GCC, you never run out of humidity, so I think it's a really untapped resource. When we say that our water is ultra pure, this is not a marketing gimmick, this is a scientific term, because when you capture water from the air, you're not capturing a lot of the toxins and a lot of the metals that you typically get from groundwater. And also throughout the water plant, we've made it very, very important for us to really cut out microplastics and then distribute it also in a sustainable manner with reusable glass and aluminum bottles. People may have a concern about the quality of air from which the water is extracted. However, we have air filters to filter out the intake air and then carbon and sponge filters and also UV light to purify the extracted water. So that's why the water is thoroughly purified and safe for consumption. Much of the region's drinking water currently comes from so-called desalination, the process of removing salt and minerals from the sea. But the costs of desalination are high for government's pockets and the planet. The toxins that's released in the air, this is something very difficult to get around because it is a very heavy manufacturing process of water. And also because of the brine that it releases into the marine ecosystem and the damage that it can have on marine life. So I think with atmospheric water generation, because we're operating on such a small uh, carbon footprint, it's a, a much more sustainable option. But Qatar is increasingly recognizing the potential of harnessing humidity and turning scarcity into sustainability. Another Another company in Qatar, agri-tech startup Bee Farms, also extracts moisture from the sky, but not to quench the thirst of humans, but of crops. Bee Farms has developed a climate-resilient technology that allows farmers to grow produce in remote and arid locations, but without the need for an external water or electricity supply. Of course, the main problems here are the heat, uh, the humidity, and uh, not being able to grow uh, in conventionally. So uh, what we did, we created the controlled climate where we use the waters that we're harvesting from the air and where we're utilizing solar energy. We're not using any pesticides and what makes our farm more sustainable than others, particularly in Qatar and in this region, is that we can provide all year round production for certain crops, uh, which you cannot achieve outdoors. V-Farm's technology is in its infancy. They are still testing the waters, if you will, of sustainable farming. But its founder says its eco-friendly systems are a step towards achieving global food and water security, drop by drop. Our main mission is to feed the growing population of the world with uh, environmentally friendly technologies. I hope that we're building the foundation for the agri-tech industry to transform food industry in the whole world. As Chief Advisor of Bangladesh's interim government, His Excellency Professor Dr. Mohammed Yunus leads a country dealing with corruption, a struggling economy, and coping with the effects of climate change. The latter is one of the topics he's come to discuss at this year's Earthna Summit, a forum with the goal of advancing sustainability in hot and arid environments. I sat down with the 84-year-old Nobel Peace Prize winner on the sidelines of the summit. Welcome to Doha. Thank you. 
You're here at the EarthNet Summit. You said countries responsible for warming up the planet should help pay to deal with climate change. What effect does global warming have on vulnerable populations in the global south? It's all created by our habits, our way of dealing with each other, our businesses, our policies and so on, all made up this civilization. Wherever you go, buy, 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 uh, discount, uh, bargain, you produce things which people will use once and throw away. So it's a waste creating system. As long as our lifestyle is not adjusted to the safety and security of the planet, we'll destroy it. This civilization doesn't believe in safety, security of the planet. They want to enjoy themselves. So we have to be responsible and we have to create a civilization of responsibility that how to protect the planet and then live here in a decent, responsible way. So we need to create that. What are the challenges in providing clean water in Bangladesh and the Global South? Everywhere, same problem. You pollute and you look for clean water. You, you throw all the uh, plastic into your river and you look for clean water. You throw all the garbage in your river, in your water system, you look for clean water. So you put all the kind of chemicals to clean it and so on, and you pollute water more because you put chemicals into it. That's not sustainable. Something has to give, right? Absolutely. You have to change your lifestyle. With many Bangladeshis worried about their, where the next meal is coming from, how do you convince the public that climate change and sustainability are important issues to address? With the poor people, the people who are worrying about the next meal, they don't care about uh, environment and so on because you don't care about the environment either. So how can you tell other people to care about it when you yourself don't believe in it? You have created a system where uh, you are always encouraging to buy. It's a, either it's a Christmas or it's eat, buy, buy, buy. All you are creating waste. You buy and throw it away. So you are encouraging that and then asking somebody else to do that. Opposite. You can't do that. You have to build a system where you follow the rules for everybody. We all have to make sure our lifestyle is not waste creating lifestyle. It's a lifestyle which we reuse, we protect, we preserve, not throw away. If you look at the uh, vegetable industry uh, around the world, particularly in Europe, almost 40% of the vegetable is thrown away. Fresh vegetable. Why? because they don't fulfill the standard shape, waste creating, throwing good food away, good things, good shirt away because it's out of fashion. You created something called fashion, fashion industry. What? Meaning that today what we are wearing, tomorrow you must not wear that fashion industry. They brainwashed you. It's a good shirt, good dress, good thing. Yesterday it was a hot item. Today it's a bad item. That's waste. Since 2010, Qatar Science and Technology Park has been home to the ConocoPhillips Global Water Sustainability Center. In recent years, the company has invested in developing innovative solutions for treating produced water from the oil and gas industry. The idea is to show Qatar has added its voice to the global water sustainability conversation. This state-of-the-art facility serves one main purpose, to analyze water and provide support not only in Qatar, but to many countries. The Global Water Sustainability Center brings together the experience and expertise of engineers and analytical scientists, which makes it unique. Mishail Almas is one of three Qatari scientists on the team. A part of our mission involved really supporting the country's capacity building and focusing on the cultivation of local talents of engineers and scientists. And as a Qatari engineer since I joined the center, there has been a journey of development opportunities uh, to enhance my technical skills and knowledge as well as broaden my creativity and innovation. The center is the research arm of oil and gas company ConocoPhillips. They conduct research in water and wastewater treatment technology, including seawater desalination. Dr. Samar Adam says for every barrel of oil, three to four barrels of water are also produced. 
In the past, we used to really uh, dispose it. Uh, we inject it back to the reservoir to maintain pressure and enhance oil recovery. However, with the increased pressure on regulations as well as environmental sustainability guidelines and also advancement of the water technologies, opportunities are being looked upon right now to how to treat this water and recycle it for beneficial reuse. That's a large part of why his team created the Global Water Sustainability Center 15 years ago to come up with new ways to manage this byproduct. Before we established the center, many of the water samples used to be shipped overseas for analysis. And we have this state-of-the-art laboratory right now and unique expertise. And we were able to send the samples directly to our lab here, and come th which facilitate the shipping as well as the quickness and the fastness of coming up with a solution. Water-related research is one thing, but getting the word out to the public is another. Here at the Water Visitor Center, the GWSC hopes these interactive, hands-on exhibits promoting water conservation awareness will engage people at a grassroots level, especially school children. By teaching children about water conservation, the hope is it will show how they can make a difference in their own homes. Iman El Shamari leads the outreach program for the Water Visitor Center. Qatar is a water scarce country, and the focus has been to get the water supplies from the salty uh, sea through desalination. Desalination is highly energy intensive and costly uh, treatment technology, so that means every drop counts. Uh, and in the oil and uh, gas sector, there is uh, waste water is generated. So at the GWSC, we are focusing on uh, treating this water to be recycled and to reuse in the plant. On that way, we minimize the demand on the expensive desalinated water in the industry. From sustainability experts weighing in on efforts to conserve water, to a Nobel Peace Prize winner discussing ways we pollute our most valuable resource, we hope you enjoyed learning about some initiatives underway to protect our planet. But that's all the time we have for now. For more, check out Euronews.com and connect with us through our hashtag. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Cutter 365.